Hey everyone, I'm DT10 and in this video I'll be showing you how to build this TARDIS right here which is the War Doctor's TARDIS in vanilla Minecraft. So if you enjoy this video then please consider subscribing as we are slowly edging towards 1000 and I really need your help to get there. Anyway, with that out of the way, let's get on with the video. So this is the TARDIS exterior that we will be building in this tutorial. So because we're using this glow lichen along with the cyan terracotta to go for that sort of scarred and weathered effect, you do need to be on at least 1.17 for this tutorial, whereas most of my other ones are possible in slightly earlier versions. And then as you head on inside, this is the TARDIS interior that we will be building. So it follows similar dimensions and theme to my 9th and 10th TARDIS, however, because that one is very, very old, and my style has sort of changed since I made that video, that's literally the first video on the channel, I've sort of made some changes, even though I know that technically they are supposed to be the same size, as they don't change that much after his regeneration. But yeah, I've taken a couple of creative liberties and made this one a little bit larger, so it can just fit a bit nicer and just look a little bit better. And so with that, let's get building. Right, so to start with, we're going to be building the exterior. And first of all, you're going to need to run the following command, slash give, and then at self or your name, and then command block. So start typing it and then press tab and then press enter and you'll get yourself a command block. Next up, you need to dig two blocks like this and then a further one block down in an L shape and place a command block facing up. In this command block, you then need to put the following command, TP, at P and then the coordinates of where you're going to be building your interior. So for the purposes of this video, I'm just going to put 2000, 2000. However, this Y coordinate needs to be one block above the floor. Then we're going to cover this up with two blocks of cyan terracotta with a dark oak press plate on this one behind here. Then we're going to make a bit of a horseshoe shape with cyan terracotta all the way around like that. And then we're going to do it again. And then we're going to go one, two, three, four in a diamond shape like that. And then all the way around the top again like like this. You can fill in these two blocks in the middle and then place a sea lantern with some grey carpet on top like that. We're then going to need some iron bars and place one in each of these gaps. Then just place a dark oak door or any door really but I think dark oak works quite well in this gap right here and then you're going to need a, some dark oak signs, 12 to be exact, and a birch sign. So first of all come to this block right here. Place a dark oak sign and then go one line down and write in capital letters police. Then on the next sign, still on the second line down, you're going to write public cool like this. Now you can do it in capital letters if you want, I prefer to do it lowercase just to demonstrate that it's a little bit smaller than the rest of the text. And then finally on this one, still on the second line down, you're going to put box all in capital letters. Dye all of these signs white using some white dye and then make them glow using a glow ink sack. And now what you can do is control middle click all of these signs and then as you can see you can go around and place them without having to retype them. This is a really helpful shortcut for something like this when you need 12 signs that all have the same text. Then you're going to need a birch sign as well. Come down to this block right here next to the door and on the first line write police telephone like this. You can't do it in capital letters otherwise it won't fit. Then you need to put three in capital letters on the next line, for use of on the next line like that and finally public on the bottom line like that. And now we're going to need some glow lichen and what we're going to do with this is place one to three blocks on each of the sides of our TARDIS including the roof. So I'm going to do three on that one, two on that one, two on this one and then I'll do three on this one and a couple on the roof as well which I'd done earlier. So what this is meant to represent is the cracks and the, the scars on the War Doctor's TARDIS. So this one in images is very very weathered which is why we've got the cyan terracotta and due to the time war and how many battles it's been in it's also very cracked which is represented by this glow lichen and I think it does a really good job of doing that. It also makes it glow at night which is pretty cool. Anyway as we head on inside we're now ready to start on our interior. Right, so first of all, come one block behind the block you teleport to. Make sure it is actually behind and not in front, because otherwise that would mess up the entire build. And you're going to dig down at two blocks and place another command block facing up. In this command block, you need to put TP at P, just like the other one, but then these coordinates need to be the exact coordinates of your exterior. So what I mean by this is go over to your exterior and go to the door and stand on the exact same block as the door and write down the coordinates. So for me, if I press F3, that's one. 1037998. 
However, something else quite key is you need to put 0.5 and then a 0.5 for both the X and the Z coordinates. This means that you will teleport into the actual middle of the block instead of either in the door or on top of the pressure plate, which would just loop the entire thing. So then hit enter, then stand on the pressure plate behind you and enter it into your command block. So once you've got that, click done and then put a block of cyan terracotta on top like that with a dark oak pressure plate on top like that. Next up, we're going to place another cyan terracotta block behind it with a dark oak door like this. Then we're just going to go behind with some cyan terracotta just in case you see through the door. Now this is just more of a precautionary measure because as you can see the moment you step on the pressure plate you'll teleport so you shouldn't need to see it but just in case there's any lag it's nice to block it up. Then what we're going to do is mirror this shape one block in front and place two iron bars like that with two sea lanterns behind them like that. Next up we're going to place another three sign terracotta on top like that and then grab the same signs that we had from our exterior and place them on here. So I've just done the control middle click thing again and you should have police public cool box like that. Then you're going to need some more glow lichen and place one block on this bottom block here and one in the middle block right there. And now we're going to need one of these an invisible item frame and to do that you're going to copy and paste the command in the description which looks like this. Slash give at self item frame and then the nt tag invisible. 1B. Once you hit enter, this will give you one of these invisible item frames, and then you can place it on this block here with a redstone lamp in it like that to represent the telephone that we can see on the inside of the door. Now, this is a good time to note that in the show, we don't actually see the entrance to the War Doctor's interior, and because this is sort of a blend of classic and modern TARDIS interiors, we don't really know if it's more of like a classic door with the roundels, or if it's more of a new who door like this. And the new who one is the one I've chosen to go for, but depending on who you are, they might do a bit of a different door design. And that does mean if you want to, you can customize this however you'd like. Right, so next up we're gonna need some bone blocks and we're also gonna need some other blocks that won't actually be seen in the interior. So for this, you can use whatever you want. But to make it easier in this tutorial, I'm just gonna use bone blocks because obviously I'm building it in creative so I don't need to conserve resources or anything. So first of all, we're going to come to the left of the door and build a big pier up here with our temporary blocks and then place bone blocks on the side of this. Now the reason we're using these temporary blocks is because we want this texture right here for our roundels. If we don't place them on the side of blocks, we just place them like this. As you can see, you will get this texture, which we don't want. We want this top texture here. So that means there's going to be a lot of temporary blocks in this TARDIS, and if you want to, you can go back and break them once you're done with them. So now come on top like this and place a row of temporary blocks behind, and then place bone blocks along like this, and then another row of temporary blocks behind here with blown blocks. So you've now surrounded your entrance with these bone blocks. Once you've got this, we're going to come to the right hand side of our TARDIS and in line with these bone blocks we're going to place 10 temporary blocks going all the way up like this with some bone blocks in front of them like that. Then we're going to do exactly the same right here. And then once you've got something that looks like this, we're going to do exactly the same right here. So you should now have something that looks like this. And what we're going to now do is place some more temporary blocks, but on a slightly different block. So we're going to come to here and place 10 going up this way instead. So we've now changed direction. And then you're going to place all your bone blocks in front like this. And you should have a bit of a corner. Now what we're doing here is creating a big circle, which is going to form the walls of our TARDIS. So next up, we're basically going to repeat what we did here but on this side so we're going to need some more temporary blocks going up like this with another row of 10 bone blocks in front then we're going to do exactly the same thing again right here 10 temporary blocks with 10 bone blocks in front and next up for this section of the wall we're going to do a five by five square so come one block behind your temporary blocks and place five temporary blocks in a line like this then place another four on top like that and carry these all the way up to the top then once you've got something that looks like this place all of your bone blocks on each of these blocks like this and once you've done that we've effectively got one quarter of our circle and what we're going to do is basically replicate all of these blocks all the way around the TARDIS to create a circle and to help you with that I've given you an outline so these are your temporary blocks meaning the bone blocks are actually going to go one block in front of all of these which is why these gaps exist because obviously the bone blocks will fill these up so there's no need to place any blocks there so carry these all up by a further four blocks and then place the bone blocks 
blocks in front. So you can pause the video here to catch up, but once you've done that, you should have something that looks like this. So you've got all of your temporary blocks behind and then all of your bone blocks in front, creating this big circle. So just check, it should go one, two, three, four, five, one, two, one, two, one, two, then one, two, one, two, one, two, one, two, three, four, five, facing the other way. And that should be repeated all the way around your TARDIS like this. And now we've done this, we're just gonna grab some light gray concrete and go all the way around the top of these bone blocks with this light gray concrete. So we'll be coming back to this light gray concrete a little bit later to construct our roof. But for now, we're gonna turn our attention to the floor. Now, I've just realized in my world, I've been an absolute idiot because you remember earlier, I said to set it one block above your Y value. Yeah, that's so that you don't have to break and replace all of these blocks to create your floor. But I totally forgot about that and that means you probably forgot about that, so I'm really, really sorry. But it's no big deal, all it means is that we just have to break the blocks in order to replace them instead of just putting them on top like this. So that does mean you can go back and lower your Y value by 1 in that first teleport command block. So we can go back here and put this to 37 instead, just to make it a little bit more seamless if you'd like to. Yeah, really sorry about that, I just totally forgot. But anyway, now with this sign terracotta, what we're going to do is first of all break one one, two, three, four blocks in front of this doorway area here. So you can destroy all of these and replace them with your cyan terracotta. And what we're going to do next is go all the way around the outside and create a bit of a inner circle and then fill it all in with our cyan terracotta. So first we'll come to this left block here and destroy these two and place them with cyan terracotta. Then destroy this one, this one, and then another two right here. And then one, two, three, four, five in front of this section here. And then continue that all the way around so one two one two like that one two and then one two three four five and just do that all the way around your TARDIS and now we've got something like this what you can go ahead and do is fill all of this space in with your cyan terracotta just make sure you don't go past this border so once you've got something that looks like this we're actually going to grab some gray carpet and some sea lanterns so this gray carpet we're going to sort of randomly dot around in this cyan terracotta area and that is meant to represent the sort of random wires that the doctor has around this area. However, it also serves two other purposes. First of all, it adds some really nice texture and variation to this section of the floor. And second of all, you can actually hide sea lanterns under this carpet and it still emits light. And what that means is instead of using light blocks like I normally do in my TARDISes, this can actually be lit up fully in survival. So you don't need any creative stuff or commands to light this TARDIS up. So just go ahead and do that now. Place some random bits of gray carpet sort of connected in some areas like this all the way around your TARDIS. And and then place some sea lanterns under some of them. So there we go. This is the pattern that I've gone for. But yeah, like I said, you can choose to whatever you want. Now we're going to need some polished andesite slabs. And what you're going to do is go all the way around this outline that we made earlier. So once you've done this, we're going to do a very similar thing with what we did here, just on a slightly smaller scale. So now what you're going to do is go one, two, three, four blocks in like that. So you should have five blocks total. But now you're going to do three here, three here, three there, and then five like that. So what we're now going to do is create another one of these little outlines. So you're going to place a block right here, one, two, three, a block right here, another block, one, two, three, two blocks like that, one, two, three, and then another block like that. And you should have another slightly smaller circle inside this main circle. I know I did that a little bit quickly, so sorry about that, but it should be one, two, three, one, two, one, two, three, one, two, all the way around. And now you can go ahead and fill this entire area in with more polished andesite slabs. Now, finally, for this floor, you're going to need just just some regular stone and what you're gonna do is fill in this entire area with this stone so we will be breaking some of these blocks to make way for the console which is what we're going to move on to next but for now this is what you should have for your floor and it looks pretty cool right so for the console first of all find the middle block of this TARDIS which is this one right here so obviously break this block and then break the block underneath and then punch out this block this block this block and this block and then all of the corners as well and then you're gonna fill this entire space in with either iron, emerald, gold, diamond, or netherite blocks, because what we're going to be doing here is creating a beacon. So pop the beacon on like that, and it should start glowing like that. Now we're going to grab some white stained glass. I'm going to go one, two, three, four, five, six, seven blocks up like that on top. Next up, we're going to need some spruce planks, and we're going to surround this bottom area with these planks. Then with some spruce stairs, we're going to place these four on top like that. And then we're also going to place one, two, three, four stairs facing outwards like this. 
Next up, we're going to need some smooth sandstone slabs and place one on each side of these stairs, which should connect the entire console up like this. And then in these gaps, what you're going to do is destroy these stone blocks and replace them with sea lanterns, then put some white stained glass on top like that and repeat that all the way around like this. So this is your basic console design. And now we're going to need some barriers and some white carpet. So yeah, just a bit of a heads up. This bit isn't actually possible unless you're in creative mode. So really, sorry about that if you're doing this in survival but you can find a way around it which i'll tell you in just a second so with this carpet we're still going to be adding to this rotor design right here so what you're going to do is place one on top of each of these spruce stairs like this with another carpet on top like that and then on top of these carpets you're going to place a barrier block like this and then on top of these barrier blocks you're going to place another four carpet with another four carpet on top like that and you should have something that looks like this so if you want to avoid using this barrier block what you can do is just place carpets going all the way up like this now it does look okay but in my opinion it just looks a little bit too cluttered so i like to keep this middle bit sort of clean and then have two bits either side like that or you if you want to you can just choose to not use this carpet at all but for me i think it's quite a nice little detail and it links it in to my coral tardis which also used this very similar carpet design for the rotor so yeah for the rest of this tutorial i'm just going to leave it like this with the barrier blocks and next up we're going to get to decorating this console so you can really use whatever redstone items you want and then just some skeleton skulls but i'm going to go with these ones right here so first we'll place a polished black stone here with a lever flicked on like that then we're going to need a redstone repeater facing out of it on one tick like that then we're going to put a heavy weighted pressure plate here with a lever facing out like that not powered on and a comparator facing that way with this bit turned on i have no idea what that bit's called then we're going to place a polished blackstone pressure plate here another lever powered on and a heavy weighted pressure plate right here a redstone repeater facing this way like that another lever here and then just leave this block blank then with our skeleton skulls we're going to place one facing inwards diagonally like that and another one it's exactly the same way on this side like that so these are sort of supposed to represent monitors now obviously these are very very basic and if you wanted to you could use a player head so if you want something that looks a little bit better than these skeleton heads in the description i'll leave this really really long command which when put in a command block and set to always active will give you one of these a white monitor player head and now these obviously look much much better and they fit really nicely as well but yeah this is sort of your survival option the skeleton the skull and if you're doing it in creative it does look much nicer with one of these but anyway that is our console complete and next up we're going to be building this bit above the rotor here so all you really need for this section is smooth stone slabs however the rest of the blocks i've got is for the roof which we will also be constructing in a second so first of all what you're going to do is come on top of this glass block right here and place a slab in each of these four directions like that but what we're actually going to do in a second is destroy this block because we need this slab section right here however if we leave it like this the beacon beam will obviously turn off because there's now full block above it whereas if we replace it with a block that looks like this you can still have the beacon beam go through it which is exactly what we want so now we're going to come one block above and do exactly the same thing again and then we're going to replace this block with a slab slightly above so that we can keep that beacon beam going and then we're going to do this one more time next up we're going to put another slab on top of all of these four blocks turning them into full blocks and then place a slab in each of these corners like that so you should now have a bit of a square next up we're going to put another slab on top of each of these corners like that i have no idea why they've gone invisible and now we're going to place a slab in each of these gaps right here so now we're going to have a little bit of a diamond shape like that next up we're going to do a similar thing again turn each of these four into full blocks like that then we're going to place a slab on either side of them like this and this sort of finishes off this random little bit at the top of the rotor and i actually think it looks really quite cool considering it's all made out of one block and because of the slab stuff we've done it means the beacon beam can still go all the way through the roof and look really nice down here in the rotor section and next up we're going to use these four blocks to create our roof which will make this look a little bit less like it's floating randomly on top of this rotor so first of all we'll come behind the door like this so you can start anywhere really and we're going to go one block in with our light gray concrete and make a rim all the way around like this and by the way it is really important that you leave these corner blocks in like this so once you've done that we're going to create another rim that will be exactly the same but slightly 
slightly smaller because like I said we left those corner blocks in and that means as we curve this up to create a bit of a dome shape these circles will get smaller and smaller until they reach the top of our TARDIS up there. So you should now have something that looks like this and what we're going to do is just fill in each of these four blocks because we don't need them at all but next up we're going to do something a little bit different. So what you're going to do is still on this same block go all the way around with white stained glass. However, you're not going to do anything with the corners, you're just going to leave them. Once you've done that, we're going to go behind like this and place a row of sea lanterns all the way around behind this white stained glass. So now what we're going to do is go back to our light grey concrete and place a row of it all the way around on top of this white stained glass. Once you've done that, still in line with these concrete blocks, we're going to create another one of these circles like we did down here. So keeping in the corners and everything, we're just going to go all the way around our TARDIS like this. So this one can be a little bit more tricky because obviously all the blocks look the same so it can be a bit more difficult to see where you've placed them but once you've finished it off you should have a circle that looks something like this so it should be three in the middle two two and then two two and then three all the way around like that then once you've done that we're going to go one block above and create another one of these layers once again still keeping in all of the corners however this one is actually going to be a little bit different so first of all we're going to fill in each of these blocks again however this one actually has to be two blocks in all areas so we're going to actually be filling in a little bit more so first of all fill in the two blocks either side of your sort of main areas right here i'm not really sure what to call these bits but you should then have something that looks a little bit more square than a circle if we're honest and to fix that we're literally just going to place an extra block in each of these corners so that one is a little bit more tricky to do because it obviously doesn't follow the same pattern as all of the other ones but we've only got a couple more to do so now we're going to do another layer however this time we are actually going to destroy some of the corners so you're going to destroy this one right here but then leave all of these ones in and then destroy that one and then repeat that all the way around. So you should now have something that looks like this. Three blocks, then a little bit of a zigzag kind of shape, and then three blocks once again. Now we're going to grab our white stained glass and sea lanterns and do something a little bit like what we did round here, but this time the sea lanterns are going to be on top instead of by the side. So first of all, place a row of white stained glass all the way around like this. And then once you've done that, place sea lanterns on top of all of these white stained glass blocks. And then finally, to finish off this roof, grab some white terracotta this time and one block above the white stained glass so in line with all of these sea lanterns just fill in all of the gaps and there we go once you've done that your TARDIS roof is complete and it's really starting to come together there's only a couple more details we need to add right so next up we're going to be building six coral pillars for this TARDIS so two here two on this back wall and then two on this wall right here as well so there's a little bit of controversy in this TARDIS as to whether there's another two so like two right next to the door here because this in entire section like I mentioned earlier is never actually shown in the show so there is a little bit of an argument as to whether there's some extra ones but for the purposes of making this tutorial a little bit easier I'm going to assume that there's not two in this area right here meaning we're only going to need to actually build six. So for these pillars we're going to need both smooth sandstone and regular sandstone because it uses a bit of a mix to make them look a bit weathered and a bit old and battle worn. However what I'm going to do is build each one entirely out of smooth sandstone and then go in later and texture it with some randomly placed sandstone sandstone blocks just to make it look a little bit nicer. You don't have to do this but I just think it's a nice little detail. So anyway first of all we're going to come to this block right here and pillar up one, two, three, four smooth sandstone blocks with a smooth sandstone slab on top like that. Next up we're going to grab another slab and come to this second block from the bottom and place a slag diagonally outwards on the top half of this block. Next up just place a random block here with a stair on top of it and then destroy that one. That's just the easiest way to get this stair rotation. Next up, we're actually going to destroy this polished andesite slab and replace it with a smooth sandstone block like that with another smooth sandstone stair facing the opposite direction like this. Next up, place another smooth sandstone stair on the back facing downwards with another one on top facing upwards and finally another one on the back facing in the other direction like this with another smooth sandstone slab on top like that. 
Next up, we're going to need some more stairs. So place any odd random block right here with a stair coming off of the back of it like that. Then we're going to need to place another smooth sandstone slab right here like that. And then we're going to need to place another smooth sandstone block on top of this slab. Now, we're just going to come back down here and add a little extra slab like that. And then we're now going to come back up here and place a smooth sandstone stair on top of that block with another smooth sandstone stair right here. So just place a random old block there and then place it off of it like that with another smooth sandstone slab on top like that. So this is sort of the basics of our pillar, which we're then going to be slightly rotating and replicating across the TARDIS. However, before we're done, we need to connect it up to the roof as well. So continue with our smooth sandstone stairs, place one facing down diagonally across from this stair like this, and then a random block on top of that, and then a stair coming off of it, and then just replace this block with a slab. Next up, just another normal block on top of this stair with another stair on top like that, and another one behind it. And finally, one block destroying this light grey concrete in the roof to finish it off. So this is our pillar design. However, like I said, we're not done because what we're going to be doing is texturing it. So sort of just fill in some random blocks with this sandstone. You don't have to go too heavy on this, but I'd say like sort of a 60-40 split. So a little bit less regular sandstone than smooth sandstone. However, to be honest, you can sort of do this however you want. It doesn't really matter. As long as it sort of looks fairly even, something like that, for example, at the bottom would be quite good. And yeah, I'm just going to continue sort of texturing this and we'll see how it turns out. So like I said, we're just going to be replicating this design now. So I'll sort of lead you guys to it, but I'll show you sort of where you could need to start. So this pillar needs to go right here. One, two, three, four, with a smooth sandstone slab on top like that. And your finishing block, which is counted as this block, is right here. So that means that you'll have your stair block right here and then your slab block right there. And then basically just copy the rest of these blocks. So it should look a little bit like this. And then just like we did with the other one, add some sort of random sand stone blocks in there just to mix it up a little bit and there we go there's pillar number two so just check there should be a three block gap between these two pillars and this bit should be identical this bit should be identical and yeah they should look pretty similar so now what you can do is go back to when we built this pillar and just replicate it for all of these ones so your starting pillar is right here for this one with a smooth sandstone slab on top like that and your finishing block is this one right here and it's exactly the same on this side one two three four with a slab and your finishing block is here. Then as you can probably imagine, it's exactly the same on this side. One, two, three, four, with a slab on top like that, with your finishing block being here, and exactly the same on this side as well. So it always follows the same pattern. So your block should go in between like that and in between like that on this one. And then on these two, they should go in between there and in between there. So they sort of both curve into each other in a bit of a wonky diagonal. So now let's fill all of these in. Right, so once you've done that, this is what your TARDIS should look like. All three sides are exactly the same in their dimensions and everything. The only thing that's changed is your sandstone. So you should have this pillar right here, this one like this, this one like this, and then the final one like this. Now, what we're finally going to be doing is growing ourselves some dark oak fences. And we're basically going to be spamming them around the top. Now, this is because they are sort of the best thing we can use for wires. Because obviously down here, I used carpet for wires. And I tried out a lot of different things. I tried substituting them for dark oak trapdoors. I tried using carpet up here, which obviously didn't work very well. And I also tried using dark oak fences down here. And it just doesn't really look very good. So for, I opted for two completely different looking materials for both different types of wires. The ones on the floor and then, of course, the ones up here as well. So yeah, we're just going to be using some dark oak fences. And basically, as long as they all come from this sort of central area, so you can hang some from here, you can hang them from up here, they just need to go all the way and drape themselves all the way over to these pillars and stuff, all the way over to the roof. And yeah, you can sort of do whatever you want with it. And once you've done that, it should look something like this. This is roughly how many I'd recommend doing. And just make sure none of them are floating. So make sure there's a start point and an end point to every single one. And yeah, once you've done it, that is your TARDIS complete. This is our War Doctor's TARDIS in vanilla Minecraft. So I really, really hope you like this build. And if you end up building it yourself, please, please let me know in the comments or join my Discord server. The link is in the description to share some images of it. So there we go. That is it for this tutorial. I really hope you enjoyed it and that is it for the entirety of my Doctor's TARDIS tutorial series. Now I say it Doctor's because yes, I will be doing
doing some of the other TARDISes. These include the Masters, the Rani, the Scream of the Shulker. I'll be doing loads of them. However, that's not going to come for a while because I'm going to take a break from TARDIS tutorials. So I'm going to be doing a classic TARDIS compilation. So right from the Ruth Doctor's TARDIS to this one in a similar style, but it'll be slightly longer to the other compilation I did for my New Who ones. There's a card in the top right if you'd like to give that a watch. But yeah, after I've released that, I will be taking a couple of months off of TARDIS tutorials. And this will mean that my uploads will become a little bit less frequent because my other series, Doom's Death SMP, is also just finished. So yeah, I'm going to take a little bit of a break from sort of YouTube in general. I'll still be uploading some random videos here and there, and you'll probably still be able to expect an upload around once a month, maybe even more frequent than that. So it's not really a proper break, but it's just a break from the regular, in quotation marks, content I've been doing. So the videos are all very, very similar in how they're made, or if they're part of a big series like Doomsday SMP or this TARDIS tutorial series. So there will be a world download available from this TARDIS and all of the other classic ones I've done in the description of that compilation video I mentioned earlier, which will be coming out in probably a couple of weeks. I've got a couple of other things I want to do first, maybe a month or so. So you have to wait a bit for that. So apologies. But once it's available, I'll leave a link in the description if you'd like to go and give it a watch. So anyway, I really hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, please leave a like or comment. And if you'd like to see more content like this, then please subscribe because I'm trying to reach 800 by the end of April and I could really do with your help. But anyway, with that, I've been DT10 and I will see you in the next video.